I'm just going to hang on to this, give me something to do with my hands. Um, it's really nice to see a lot of familiar faces here. It makes this a lot easier on me. Um, I've come here today to talk to you about Open Graph and setting it up in WordPress to make it easy to share beautiful content on every social network. So this is an example of what correctly configured uh, blog posts look like on Twitter, Facebook, and, or rather Pinterest, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, so this is a rich pin, this is a Facebook website link, and that is a Twitter card. So you've probably seen these in your timelines when you're scrolling through. Uh, it started, most companies started promoting things with large images on Twitter, and uh, Facebook alternates between different formatted images. Um, but it gives you even more than that, especially like with Twitter, you get even more characters and more words to share your message. So this is really valuable. Uh, if you ever share posts from your site to one of these networks only to find that your images aren't displaying or the right image isn't displaying, your content is compressed into a short URL, or everything that you're trying to say is cut off awkwardly, Open Graph gives you control over how your content is presented on social media. So what is Open Graph? Now, this is the official definition. I'm not going to read it for you. <laughs> um, because essentially, Open Graph is something that Facebook came up with that uses meta tags in HTML to present specific data that can be easily found by uh, bots used by Facebook, Pinterest, most social networks. You can write your own in PHP. So it's a method of using meta tags to tell social networks how to display information from your website. And it really puts full control over your content into your own hands. Now, if you were on Facebook before 2010 and you shared links, you remember they used to give you little arrows on the thumbnails and it would show you every image on the page and you'd have to kind of click through and find the right one. And Sometimes it didn't give you all the images, and the one that was actually in your blog post didn't show up. Uh, sometimes it wouldn't use the title of your site. It would use whatever that found in an H1 tag. So it was really kind of random. You didn't have a lot of control over it. Um, so Facebook introduced Open Graph. There were a few other things around at the time, schema.org, uh, micro formats. But Facebook had to do its own thing, and everyone quickly adopted it. So why is it important? Right now, a year later, because I, I have looked for updated statistics on this, but it looks like social networks are responsible for about 31 to 35 percent of traffic referrals on the web. The remainder are generally search engine traffic. Of that 31 to 35 percent, Facebook is responsible for a quarter of it. The next uh, biggest driver of traffic is Pinterest. And some of their referrals are slowing down a little bit, but they had huge explosive growth in 2013, 2014. Everybody was pinning, and those pins were driving traffic back to your website. The interesting thing about this is that Pinterest has significantly fewer users than Facebook, but really excellent referral numbers. Now, that's because of their UI and business model. Pinterest is created to share your links and drive traffic back to your site. Facebook is also created for that, but does its own content curation. It very much picks and chooses what it shows to your, you know, your users, your audience. And they really want you to pay for that privilege. You know, they, they really try to funnel you to their ad network. So I included this because this is like the opposite of the numbers we just looked at. This is social media post-click engagement. YouTube is at the top, but the numbers we just looked at a minute ago, YouTube was at the bottom and in fact had lost 95% of its referral power, essentially. And that's because of very specific things that YouTube has done since Google acquired them to really de-emphasize comments like, when you refer to the dregs of the internet, YouTube comments is usually the first thing you think of. Um, so it's really been de-emphasized in the interface. And YouTube's relationship with its sponsors is different. Uh, YouTube is television, essentially. 
So when it shows you an ad, it's not really trying to get you to click out of its video and go somewhere else. It just wants you to look at the ad. That's not how it is anywhere else on the web. And you all know what it's like when you click on a cat video and you're in the YouTube interface and you're like, okay, that was a pretty good cat video. And it gives you all these related ones on the side where you're like, oh my god, I got 15 more cat videos I need to watch in the next 10 minutes. <laughs> So YouTube's engagement is huge. It keeps you on the site, it keeps you engaged, it keeps you looking. It's not sending traffic back to your website. So Facebook, which does, is way lower for engagement. Surprisingly, because you know, I'm on Facebook all day long. <laughs> so I would expect its engagement numbers to be a lot higher, but truthfully, I check in on my timeline and I click out to go somewhere else. I'm reading a New Yorker article, I'm looking at my friend's baby pictures, you know. So Facebook is a little lower in the engagement, a lot higher in the referrals. Facebook has a long established ad network and the statistics don't distinguish between referrals that come from the ads or groups or business pages or your personal timelines. So Facebook drives the majority of traffic, but that could be from anything. It could be from conversations that you're having in a group. It could be from an ad you click on. As I mentioned, Pinterest's entire model is aggregating links to external websites. So Pinterest is all about pushing that traffic back out. LinkedIn's referral share, I should have given you a little more time to refresh, but LinkedIn's referral share has dropped significantly because they've introduced more tools for posting content to LinkedIn itself. So people are sort of sharing it with their internal networks on LinkedIn. It's not really about checking your LinkedIn timeline to click out to a New Yorker article. It's keeping you more in the sort of walled garden of LinkedIn itself. And YouTube's referral traffic, re referral traffic has dropped 96% since 2012 as they've de-emphasized commenting and reworked their interface to keep viewers on YouTube. Got the mic too close. Now, why open graph is important. Rich pins have an 80% higher repin rate than regular pins. Rich pins give you a little bit of additional content. They give you extra control. You can even go so far as to set up your open graph so that when a user goes to your blog post on your website, they're seeing the illustration you present to them. But when they try to pin that link, they're given more image options to pin, even if they're not displayed on the page. So you can say, oh, no, no, these are my five Pinterest image options, but your blog post actually only shows one. So when, you have, when I say you have control, you have really amazing control. If your content is beautiful, people will want to share it. This is huge. Search engine traffic is obviously the biggest driver of traffic referrals. Search engine traffic is none of the personalized traffic you get from social media. It isn't a recommendation. It isn't people sharing what they love. It's pretty easy to use Open Graph. If you're a dev, you can just add the meta tags yourself. You can add the PHP to your theme to put fresh, con fresh data into those meta tags every time you update a blog post. I'm a dev, and I think that's a pain. So when I add the tags to my HTML, I want to use a plugin I already have installed that can do it for me, and I don't want to think about it after I have it set up the first time. So I used Yoast, WordPress SEO by Yoast. Um, and I have a couple other plugin options for you. The reason I start with that one is because it has really huge market share. A lot of people have it pre-installed already. A lot of hosts roll it out with their WordPress installs. So there's a good chance you have it even if it's not activated. Hopefully all of your unactivated plugins have actually been deleted. But <laughs> all right, so whoa, what tags? This shows you what the meta tags look at, like in your market. Don't worry about it. This is really only important if you're familiar with HTML. It's not crucial knowledge. But this gives you an idea of some of the data that these networks can crawl through and say, oh, 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 OK. So this is a movie. Here's an image, maybe the DVD cover. Um, this is the name of the movie. This is the type of the content. This is where we can click to to get more information. 
I really don't want to add those tags to my theme. <laughs> um, Yoast has been changing some of the things that they offer in their plugin. Even since I first wrote this out a few months ago, they have taken out some functionality that was formerly free, and they have moved it to some of their uh, premium add-ons. And we can shake our fists and think that it's corporatization, but it probably made technical sense to move those functions out. Yoast WordPress SEO does a ton of things. It does a ton of things. Part of the reason why I suggest other plugins that handle the same uh, features is because the two other plugins I suggest only do this. They only manage your open graph. So it really helps you focus on, hey, this is how I want this data to be presented. This is where I want to set it all up. Yoast is vast. You can take classes on it. You cannot get to the end of it. So if you find it daunting or anything, there are other alternatives. And I make no promises as to whether or not Yoast is going to keep this functionality free in the future. They might move it out to an add-on. But if you have it and you've activated it, in your settings, you're going to get tabs for these four networks. This doesn't mean that it excludes other networks, like LinkedIn, for example. It means that those networks can already read the basic OG tags, and they don't have any special ones that they're looking for. So if you set up these basics, LinkedIn's going to get pretty content from you. So go under the Facebook tab, check the box. It's not checked by default. And then hook yourself hook up your Facebook account as an admin. All you have to do is click the button. It'll take you out to Facebook to authorize it, and it'll walk you through any, ad any additional steps. Twitter, and this, this is, it goes on to step two of our three-step process. But Twitter, you check the box. It's not checked by default. You choose the default card type to use. Twitter offers four currently. They have offered more in the past. They might offer more in the future. A summary card with large image is the one you want to use. A summary card alone doesn't include any images, and they don't have the referral rate that the large image summary cards have. Don't worry about the images. You don't have to have beautiful illustrations. You do not have to spend a lot of money on stock photography. I'm going to show you easy ways to create images for your blog posts that are free and don't involve any graphics design or artist knowledge. Just you can just create a background color, put text on it, and it even offers you more characters to add to your Twitter card. I skipped Pinterest because it's just a checkbox. Google Plus, I cover this in slides coming up. Google Plus has beautiful content. Your links look beautiful when you post them. Open Graph is just a tiny bit of spice. There isn't really anything special Open Graph does for Google because Google is the king of sharing beautiful content on the web. But this gives you the ability, and this helps your SEO. This is where you're not going to notice a ton of different in your con a ton of difference in your content, but Google's noticing it on the back end, and it really does improve um, how Google distributes your data. So now when you're editing a post and you're using WordPress SEO, this is what you're going to see at the bottom of the post editor. So I've created this blog post. This is showing me my keywords, et cetera, et cetera. You're going to click the social link on the end. And then it's going to show you just a long scrolling page with these four networks. And in each one, you can copy and paste the same title and description. And then you can upload an image, or it will use the featured image for that blog post for all networks. You don't really want to use the featured image, and I'll tell you why. Um, on Twitter, pay attention to the character limits in your description. Even though this is going to be added on top of any 140 character tweet you've already written when you share this link, you still, I think, are limited to 155 characters in the description. That's not the case for Facebook so much. Facebook will be a little more flexible. SEO best practice, avoid duplicate content. Just because you can cut and paste the title and the description and even in the image, you don't necessarily want to. Content is already, not, it's easier for some. For me, it's a little difficult. When I finally sit down and make myself work on a blog post, I, do, it, I find it easier to just go, OK, I got an excerpt. I'm just going to use it everywhere. It's not a great idea. Google's looking at that content that you're sharing. And if it differs between the networks, that's a good thing. 
it doesn't have to be a brand new description for every network for your blog post, but change it up a little bit. A couple words here and there. All right, we've done it. We've added those tags. It was easy. Now we need to validate them. And that means we wanna, we wanna put our blog post link into something and we wanna see what we're gonna get back out of it. Facebook makes this really easy. Facebook not only shows you what your post is gonna look like on Facebook, but it actually shows you all the meta tags that it found, all the open graph tags that it found, and it spits your data back out at you so that you know exactly what Facebook's seeing and you know that WordPress SEO is set up correctly. So this is the great default debugger. Um, all these links are aggregated at the end of my presentation, so you can easily find them in one place and use them when you're setting up your own site. So you enter your URL, and then Facebook says, okay, this is what we found. So this is for my personal site. And I've used WordPress SEO to create uh, a default image in my settings so that if I'm not on a blog page when the link gets shared, there is a default image for my website that gets shown to social networks. Nobody visiting my website has ever seen that image. They only see it when they try to link straight to my website from Facebook or Twitter. All right. This is showing, it says this, we're, we've constructed the following open graph properties. Look at OG type at the top. It's type article. That was a mistake that, well, it's not exactly a mistake. The home page of my personal website is my blog index. I don't have a, a separate home page. So the OG type is article because it shows all of my articles in one place. This is interesting because Facebook shows this beautiful big default image with me and my babies and my little farm where my Wi-Fi greenhouse is and the title of my site and my description and everything and it's gorgeous and I expected all websites to look like that with the big image and that's not how it works. If it's OG type website, which it usually is on the index page of any site that's not a blog index, then it shows the little tiny square image. And that's the difference. So when you link to something and it shows the large image, that's because Facebook knows it's an article. When you link to something and it shows the little square image, it's because Facebook's going, oh, that's just a website, that's a home page, that's the entrance point. So when I was setting up the website for TechnoSiren, not knowing the difference between the two, my homepage there is an actual homepage. I want you to sign up for my, my mailing list and all that good stuff. So the OG type is website. And when I share the link, it's this stinky little image. And that's not really how I wanted it to look. And I had to, figure, I had to comb through those meta tags to figure out what the difference is because I've never found that documented anywhere. So now you know. And that's the difference and that's how you control it. So we're good on Facebook. We validated it. Twitter is going to present a little extra step. You have to get authorization from Twitter to post Twitter cards to the feed. They're gonna validate your data for you and show you what your Twitter card looks like and then they're gonna go in the back end and go through an approval process that usually takes less than 24 hours. So I enter my personal website URL and I get this beautiful large image card. And that's what it looks like in timelines if I share just the link to my homepage. These are the four card types that Twitter offers. And I left this up because it shows you the ones that it used to offer. And the reason I'm showing it to you is because companies have a habit of bringing that old data back. So right now you can do a summary card. You can do a summary card with large image. You can do an app card, which displays on mobile and links directly to app stores to promote your mobile app or you can do a player card which will embed video or audio. So this is what just a summary card without an image looks like on the web and on mobile. And as you can see, you get not just a tweet with a link, hashtags, all that good stuff, but you also get the title, the rating, the number of ratings, the price, and then you get an additional uh, description. This is an app card, sorry, I labeled it wrong. It's a summary card with the extra bonus of a link to the app store. This is a summary card with large image. So you see the image is the focus of it. Uh, these get the most interaction on Twitter. 
not even second to hashtag. I mean, the most interaction on Twitter is big images, of course. You, you start an SMS service with character limits, and as soon as you let people have images, that's what they're looking at. So you want to have images, you want to share your images, because everybody wants to share your images. If you have beautiful content, people will want to share it. So now you've validated that your, your card looks good, and then Twitter will say, hey, click this button to get approval, and it'll come back to you in a few hours and say, okay, you're approved. If your data works and it can read your open graph tags, you'll get approval. Now we're moving on to Pinterest. How many of you are pinners? Awesome. Uh, my favorite thing to do is get the kids to bed and sit down with my iPad and fiddle around on Pinterest. <laughs> so rich pins are great because rich pins, they take open graph to the max. They're the ones that use, they use all kinds of variations of open graph tags. So you can do a product, a recipe, a movie, an article, or a place. And WordPress is great for this because if you have a food blog or you're sharing recipes and you've set up custom post type for your recipes and you've got all that extra data in there, Pinterest can actually share it in place, which really makes people want to click. Product pins are kind of amazing because you have a lot of control over them. You can not only share the price including sale prices with a start and end date for your sale, so Pinterest knows when to change it back to the original price. But you can also show color information if you have product variations with colors. You can show if it's limited to a geographic area, like, hey, we only ship to Canada, or we only sell in this state, like California. You can also show how many are left in stock. Awesome. This is the one area where I'm recommending some, a paid, paid add-on feature. Uh, Yoast has a WooCommerce SEO add-on to add open graph metadata to WooCommerce products. So if that's what you're using for your shopping cart, Yoast has you covered. Pinterest just announced buyable pins, which is sort of like Pinterest acting as a shopping cart for you as a retailer. And that's huge, and a lot of people got really excited about that because if there's one thing better than pinning, especially in the Christmas season, it's doing impulse purchases from Pinterest. <laughs> um, the problem is that it's currently only available to Shopify and Demandware users. So even though I try to shy away from stuff you have to pay for, if you use Shopify and you have a WordPress site, you can pay 10 bucks a month to integrate the two, and that will give you access to buyable pins. And what that means is that not only are you sharing all the same data you share in a product pin, but people can purchase right from right there. They're not click you're not getting the traffic, but you're getting the sale. So you've set up your open graph. Pinterest has a validator. You enter your URL, URL and you validate. And you have to go through an approval process. The first time I did this, it took two weeks. They have fixed that. <laughs> it's like Apple's App Store in 2009. They have fixed that. Um, it now usually takes less than 24 hours, but you do have to get approved. Those are the only two. Twitter and Pinterest require approval. Everyone else is just happy to read your data, and if it's bad data, they exclude it. So this is what your rich pin will look like. So you got your nice big image. Not only that, you've got your title. You get your favorites icon. You get the title of your website. And you get to control the description that is displayed to Pinterest. What happens when people pin your stuff is they click it, they click an image, or they click their pin it button in their browser, and all the images come up, and then they write their own description in there. And it's misspelled, and it doesn't contain any of your keywords, and there's no hashtags or anything. So there's nothing that really links it back to your site except the URL. This gives you control over that description, and then they can put whatever com comment they want to put underneath it, but you have made sure the important information is available. You have made something that people want to share that actually contains useful information. And then this shows you just what open graph data it found, what it looks like. I really, I always forget to put the author tag in there and put my own name and my stuff. Um, so it's missing, and I left that in the screenshot because I wanted you to know what it looks like when people uh, get to 95% and then wander away. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have validated the first three, and Google Plus is going to take just no time at all because, I, as I already mentioned, Google is the best at making beautiful results from general data. 
the easiest way to validate open graph data for Google Plus is to share a post. But if you don't, this is a Google Plus post with open graph. This is my picture, my account, which is my personal name, the title, the URL to the website, and a little meta description. This is a Google Plus post without open graph, and it essentially looks exactly the same. So what the benefit that you're getting here is behind the scenes. Google says, oh, this has pretty data. I can share pretty data. I, I, can, I can bump up some page rank a little bit here, because this is, this is nicely formatted. <coughs> if you really want to get into it, and if you really want to structure the data that you're sharing with Google, they offer three interesting tools, and I have included them here for you. Um, the one that I actually use is when I link up a site to Webmaster Tools, I use the data highlighter in addition to my open graph tags to tell Google exactly what I want shown because then it improves how my, search, how my site looks in search results. All right. Oh, yeah, hold on one second. I gotta remember how to do that. Okay, there you go. Uh, keep in mind, this presentation is available on Google Drive. I'll give you a link to it at the end of this, and it, all of these links are aggregated at the end so that there's an easy place to find them. All right, we've done it. We've set up Open Graph. Hooray! Now we get to make a post. So you guys knew I was going to use this post because I've been using it everywhere, but my images don't really look right, do they? All right, so I've made this post. I've done all this work. My blog, which I neglected to include a screenshot of here, has a masonry layout. And I like square images on my blog for that reason. Kind of looks a little bit like Pinterest. Pinterest and Google Plus only scale the width of your images. So your images can be as tall as you want. They're going to knock the width down to about 400 pixels. Depends on the context. And then whatever size your image is, that's going to that's gonna display fully. Twitter and Facebook, they want your images in a 2 to 1 image ratio or a 16 to 9 image ratio, which means they want wide images, which don't look so great on Pinterest and Google Plus because you don't get any height, you really can't read text, you know, it's not taking up as much space because the width scaled way down. So my square images end up looking like this and getting cropped by Twitter and Facebook. So what I do and what I've done, because I am extremely lazy, is I have created a Photoshop template that uses smart objects so that when I write a blog post, I double click on one of those two smart objects, I edit it, I just put my blog title in there and any extra in text information I wanna add. You can put any photographs in there, any background, anything like that. Once you save it, it updates everything on this page so you get a preview of what your rich text is or what your posts, your open graph posts are going to look like. And you can verify that, okay, these images work everywhere. They're not going to get cropped. They're going to they're gonna look good. So I've got a square format for my blog and for Google Plus and Pinterest. And I have a 2 to 1 and a 16 to 9 format for Twitter and Facebook. And when I click Save, all of these images are generated and saved to a folder with reasonable names so that I know what they are, so that when I go back to Yoast SEO and it gives me those image upload options, all my images are created, it took 10 seconds, I can just upload them and I'm ready to go. Before I had a template or something like this, the act of having to create images for my content was too much for me and it would usually help me procrastinate on creating a blog post. I'd be like, ugh. I gotta set up an image, I gotta do the writing, I gotta make five images, I've gotta create excerpts for all of this. This makes it a lot easier. So I've fixed my image. I, I've kept the square one that I like for my blog, and then I've figured out a way to make the text work in the two to one ratio and the 16 to nine ratio, and I save it, and now I have beautified my content. I've, I've fixed it, it's better. And we're getting to the end of my slides, so I hopefully have left some time for questions. But this is my favorite alternative to WordPress SEO. All this plugin does is open graph, and it does it very nicely, and it really walks you through it. Um, it has a really long name, but it's easy to find on the, in the plugin repository, and it's free. When you install it, <laughs> It has a pretty hilarious uh, notice about using it with WordPress SEO. <laughs> and um, 
yeah, it's not a problem. Just don't click those check boxes that I had you click in WordPress SEO and there's no conflict. WordPress social sharing optimization. This one's great too. I, I, I use this on my personal site. Um, it's free. It's well represented, well supported. There are good developers working on it. So there's my recommendation. And here you go. These are the resources that we've discussed. These are the plugins. This is an easy way to get to those three validators. Um, just in the course of general content creation, you can pretty much just use the Facebook validator and it will show you what your meta tags look like. Uh, you really only use the Twitter card and the Pinterest validator for that one time to get approval. This is Sprout Social's always updated image cheats cheat sheet on Google Drive tells you what sizes your social uh, images need to be for your timeline. It also includes the sizes you need for your profile images, your cover or background images. We don't really cover that in the course of this talk, but it's a really handy resource and they do keep it updated all the time. The last update was in July and uh, Facebook hasn't changed its timeline since then, which is really kind of weird for them. Um, and then my PSD blog template is uh, also on Google Drive. Uh, it's free to use, free to distribute, do whatever you want to do with it. It's just handy and there are Sprout Social links to a few others like it that are also really useful. All right, does anybody have any questions? Yeah, 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 are you guys taking pictures? Not yet. All right, you want that? Ooh. Sorry. There we go. Okay. Every time I get it right, I hit it again. There we go. Have at it. The link to my slides isn't in the slides because that's hard to find. So I'm going to post it to Twitter. <laughs> um, but I can tell it to you right now. It's technosiren.com slash open graph. Yes. There is an earlier version of this talk that I gave at WordCamp. Slash open graph. I'm verifying it for you right now, though. I'll correct myself if I got it wrong. It's good for a four page. Yeah. <laughs> I think I need hyphens in there. Yeah, it's open hyphen graph, possibly hyphen slides. Hold on a second, I need two hands for this. All right, it's up there. And if it isn't, I can put it at slash open graph as soon as I'm done talking. She's looking it up. Yep, I'm looking it up. It's open dash graph dash. Okay, open dash graph dash slides. Great. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, question. Yeah. So, I'm looking at my Yoast plugin. Uh huh. Uh huh. And I only see Facebook and Twitter. I don't see anything else in there. Is that only a paid version? No, no. I, I don't. For some reason, I don't see Pinterest and I don't see anything else. Is it WordPress SEO by Yoast or is it Yoast? Is it the other one? The other Yoast plugin? Oh, I think it's WordPress SEO by Yoast. Okay, if it's WordPress SEO by Yoast, make sure it's updated. I did. What did I say about them taking out uh, features? I think, I think they did. My screenshots are about a month old, yeah, so. I think they took out uh, Twitter and uh, Pinterest since you made this presentation. All right. Face I think I remember them being in it. I, okay. Facebook Open Graph will cover all of those. Okay. Uh, now, anything that you set up that works in Facebook is going to look good on Pinterest and it will work on Pinterest. Oh, sorry. I guess I don't need two hands anymore. I did find the slides. Open, open, hyphen, graph, hyphen, slides. Is it slide or slides? Just uh, slides. Slides. Thank you. Yes, there's a link to it in these slides, and it's up on Google Drive. Oh, no, it's okay. It's on DigitalOcean. We're covered. <laughs> Yes, I will update it. I will do that immediately after this sentence because I thought I had updated it already and I apologize. 
Um, so, just a curious question. So, do you also do social media services? Uh, I do front end development for web dev studios, and then I do uh, premium theme creation. But I know people. So, um, <laughs> my email address. <laughs> I'm going to see if I can just bring this up so you guys can copy it down. I will tweet it out. I'm uh, on Twitter. I am at techno underscore siren. And I will tweet out my email address for anyone who wants to get in touch with me. I can make recommendations for social media services to handle this setup and creation. Um, absolutely, yes. Sure. Just so you guys know real quick. The link to the slides is technosiren.com slash open dash graph dash slides. My phone's lighting up, so I'm going to turn that off. Go ahead. Yeah. I was just wondering, so you said you use the Facebook validator for every blog post? If I, if I want to check something, double check something, that's the one to use. Okay. Because so then the other ones, Twitter filters, you only need to go through website once? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it verifies that you're legit. Mm -hmm. Pretty much they're all a one-time setup thing. Um, but if I have questions or if I think I don't like the way something looks or I'm worried about my image sizes, I use Facebook's validator to double check. Did you have a question? Yeah. Um, you mentioned on the Facebook thing about signing in as an admin. Do you have a recommendation about how to deal with that when it's for a client and you're not an admin? I make my clients give me their username and password. Or um, when they don't want to do that, they add me as an admin. So I have a lot of random pages and groups under my account that I manage because I've set up something it one time. It come from your yeah, it should come from your client. If um, if they're leery about that kind of stuff, um, they'll get over it after you provide a good service for them one time. <laughs> Go ahead. What's the added benefit of connecting it with your Facebook? Uh, what? That's a really good question, actually, because I didn't really question it when when WordPress SEO asked for it. Um, she asked, what is the benefit of connecting WordPress SEO to your Facebook account? I have no idea. It asked me for my info, and I just clicked the button and said, OK. Um, <laughs> I, now, I do know that I only have it hooked up to the TechnoSiren page. And any page that I have set up Open Graph on works fine in the validator and looks fine in the Facebook timeline. So it's clearly not a requirement for Facebook to read your Open Graph data. OK, were there any other questions? What's your opinion? My, I'm a little bit skeptical. If you're like in Facebook and any actions that you do to get it out of Facebook, like for your own link, uh -huh. your Facebook, Facebook will just not publish it as much. That's actually a really good question. Um, he, he said that it feels kind of futile to uh, work on making pretty content for Facebook, given that its algorithms don't really show very much. Yes. Shares are gold on Facebook. I mean, sharing outside of Facebook. What do you mean? Would, well, if you, if you have a nice content and you're getting a lot of likes, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say within that content, you link them out of your, like, yeah, your own website. I'm curious where Facebook is going to look at that as you're leaving Facebook, we're not going to. No, they don't, they don't want to penalize you for that. Okay. They just want you to pay for your, your audience to see your link. <laughs> they don't want to keep people from going to your link. They just want to well, force you to pay for it. Organically, because I'm tagging people. So right. I'm tapping their friends. Right. But if, if, but, but, my goal is not to, to make Facebook any richer. I'm trying to get them out. Exactly. So, <laughs> so really, fundamentally, what you want is to set this up correctly and make beautiful things that people want to share. Because once people start sharing your post, Facebook looks at likes, it looks at comments, and it looks at shares. Likes are like copper pennies. Right. Comments are like $20 bills. Shares are gold. If people are sharing your stuff, Facebook shows it to more people. So they try to encourage you to pay for those shares. They try to say, OK, give me five bucks to boost this post, and we'll show it in people's timelines. They really shake you down. But if you can get a few people to share it, all of a sudden, you're increasing your reach exponentially I mean, even if you, if for you free. Share is to get out of Facebook you wants care. external links. They want advertisers. They want to turn you, as a free user of Facebook, into an advertiser. Are we done? Yeah. OK. So. I used up all the time. Thank you guys so much. Yeah.